been doing this 25 years. Wait, I have. Hold on. All right, there we go. Very good. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It's great to see you this morning. Welcome into worship. We're glad to have you with us today. My name is David Willis. It's my privilege to be the pastor here at Forest Park. And we uh, are delighted that you've taken time out of your week to join us here and worship with us today as we prepare to come to the communion table. Very significant day in the history of this church. This afternoon at 4 o'clock, they will convene a special annual conference uh, uh, via Zoom. So it's going to be electronic and the vote will be taken as to whether or not we will continue to be a United Methodist Church or not. Um, this affiliation has been agreed on by the majority of the church. And uh, so now the annual conference approves uh, or disapproves our disaffiliation from the United Methodist Church. Keep a watch on our Facebook page. Keep a watch on your email. We will be sending out notices tonight. Now, we'll tell you this. There are... Uh, I, a bunch of churches that are going to be seeking disaffiliation today and it's my understanding that we are going to be voting on each of those churches individually so that means I've heard rumors that we could be in this meeting for as much as three hours uh, while we move through this process so I will get news out to you just as soon as possible and at the end of the day today um, we will be Forest Park Church, or at the end of the day today, you will be still Forest Park United Methodist Church. We will let you know as soon as we do. Please be in prayer about that. But in the meantime, let's do what we've come here to do today, and that is worship the Lord. Before we do that, a few things I want to call into uh, I want to call to your attention today. On the end of your bulletin, there is a connection card that looks like this. Please be sure that you fill that out and drop it in the offering plate as it comes around. And also, there is uh, an insert that looks like this. This is uh, the uh, liturg mm, the liturgy that goes along with our time at the communion table today. Please be sure that you have that with you as we move through that. Today's communion offering is going to go to the Transformational Recovery Mission and Outreach at uh, Highland Park United Methodist Church over across town. We continue to support them in that effort. There's a thank you in the uh, bulletin today from Jackie Kuma for all of our prayers, cards, and texts as um, in, in the passing of her husband. Children's ministry going strong VBS is coming up. Summer is right around the corner. On Saturday, May 20th from 9 until noon here at the church, we have an opportunity for us to serve and help the church uh, kind of get spruced up a little bit as we move into the summer. Mother's Day is just around the corner, and our women's ministry is uh, selling little gifts for you to give to your mother. Those are mugs and uh, would love to have you support the women's ministry by purchasing one of those. The rest of the um, the rest of the announcements are pretty straightforward. You can read those at your own leisure. Ruth Circle coming up Wednesday, May seventeenth, eleven o'clock at Sunny's. Wednesday night dinner this week is fried catfish, cheese grits, coleslaw, hush puppies. Yum yum. As Grandpa said, it is what's for supper. And there is a record of our faithfulness in the back there as well. As we prepare to worship together today, let's take time to pray. Bow with me. God, we love and thank you for another opportunity to come into your house, to bless you, to be with you, and to, to offer our best to you. Today we come to break bread together. We come to share your word. We come to sing. We come to lift you up and to hear the truth of who you are as it is revealed in your word. Now bless us as we come together today to worship you. Inhabit what we offer, that what we offer may glorify your name. May we be revived as we do this. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I wandered so aimless, I feel sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy. 
Good morning, church. Well, we're going to wake you up a little bit this morning, I have a feeling. This is a, a sad day for our little group in a way because Aaron, is, Aaron and Karen are leaving us. They're, they're heading back to Wisconsin now that the snow is, is done. Is, is the snow gone? Yes. It, you're sure? Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Okay, <laughs> because I think they got some snow a week ago. Yes, 20 okay. inches. 20 inches. Insanity, and you're heading back to that. So he, they're heading back to that this week. So we let Aaron pick the songs this week, and he picked some of his favorites. And the good thing is, it's a lot of our favorites too. So I think you're in for a treat. So if you please stand, we're going to start with a, a great old hymn called "Amazing Grace." And on this one, everybody's going to sing the first verse. The ladies are singing the second, the men are singing the third, and everybody's singing the last. And if you forget or get lost, just join right in. There's, there's no wrong place to sing.
Let's continue our worship now as we recite together our Apostles' Creed, our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. Gene, share with us this morning from God's Word. It's those darn on-off switches. They really you get us every them. time. Yeah. Well, our reading this morning comes from the New Testament, uh, the second book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. And this comes from God's word translation. But I thank God, who always leads us in victory because of Christ. Wherever we go, God uses us to make clear what it means to know Christ. It's like a fragrance that fills the air. To God, we are aroma of Christ among those who are saved and among those who are dying. To some people, we are deadly, a deadly fragrance, while to others, we are a life-giving fragrance. Who is qualified to tell them about Christ? At least we don't go around selling an impure word of God like many others. The opposite is true. As Christ's spokesman and in God's presence, we speak the pure message that comes from God. Blessed be God's holy word. Amen. Amen. Yeah, got it. There we go. Thank you, Jean. Let's take time to pray together once more. The pure presence of God's holy word, Father, your scripture says that um, that is uh, the aroma that we carry with us. In a few moments, as we consider the words from Joshua chapter 1, that literally implore us to carry your word with us wherever we go to meditate on it, to obey it, to follow it. Let those words stick in our mind and in our heart. They're very important because carrying the truth of your word with us allows us to carry your very presence. Because as John told us in chapter 1 of his gospel, in the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we're very grateful for that. That we can literally carry with us what we need in order to help us in a world that's ever changing around us. Thank you for that, Father. As we think about the things that have come to pass over this past week, things uh, in national and world news, things, Father, in national and world events, things in our personal lives, in our interpersonal relationships, in our, our work, Father, at school. If we give each of those life, we will be bowled over. But the truth is, 
who you are can never be bowled over by this life. So we cling to you even though things change around us. For you are unchanging. And we give you thanks for that. As we come together today, planning on coming to your communion table, our prayers turn to those who are unable to be with us today, whether they are infirm, whether they are uh, broken in their body, perhaps some broken in their spirits, those who uh, struggle with depression and loneliness, those who struggle with feelings of marginalization. We ask your blessings to fall upon them all. Let your healing find them and let them know that at this very moment they are loved and prayed for. Today, Father, we offer our best to you as we remember those who work that we may be safe, those who wear the uniform of the United States military to protect us, those who are working in essential jobs that we may be served. We're so grateful to you, Father, for their sense of service and for all that they do. And we ask that you protect them and that you draw them safely to their families once again. For our leadership, we ask your blessing as well. May they, Father, may they, Father, um, allow your voice to resonate within their ear. And as they discern it, may they follow you. This is a troubling day for many. It's evident on some of our faces. It's evident in most of our hearts. Where there is division and misunderstanding, there will be pain and a sense of loss. But you, God, even in the midst of of that trial and turmoil are as certain even more so than the rising of the sun and the setting of the same you are certain even more so than the rain that falls upon us to give us life and nourish us you father are the only unchanging thing so in the midst of change we cling to you and we do so with great faith. Bless our gathering today, Father. And as we always do at this time, we ask that you teach us to pray just as you taught your disciples when you told them to say this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever please stand we're going to sing another one of Aaron's favorites this morning and I think it's probably one that is a lot of people's favorite I know it's one of mine called I'll fly away
gospel, one of my favorites. As our ushers come forward, let's take time to pray together. Bow with me once more. Nothing can take away the truth of who you are, Father. Nothing can take away the truth of what you've done for us. Your word tells us that your son Jesus was fully human and that he was fully divine. For that, we are thankful because in both of those things, we find hope, truth, redemption. We find resurrection. We thank you, Father, for showing yourself to us in such a manner. Now, Father, we continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. We do so, Father, because we love you, and we love you because you first loved us. Without that example, we would not know the definition of what it means to love. Take what we give to you today in worship. Take what we give to you today, just as you've taught us by your example of giving. Multiply the gift, multiply the giver, that both may go into the world to serve you. This is our prayer. We offer it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This is a song about taking two different directions in life, two journeys, one with God and one with the other fellow. So when you pick up their ticket, make sure you take the right one because there is victory in the Lord I say. There's a long
be seated. Outstanding job by the uh, hymn team this morning. Thank you so much, Aaron, for those great songs, and thank you to you for coming and joining us today as we uh, worship the Lord, prepare to come to the Lord's table. Uh, just a couple of words about communion here today. First and foremost, we have an open communion table here at uh, Forest Park. That means that irrespective of your um, faith background, the table is open to you because this is not our table. It's the Lord's table. So you are welcome to come and take today. What you will see as we move to the communion table uh, may be a little bit foreign to you. Uh, what we do is come forward and kneel at the altar. We line up along the outside walls, and as you kneel at the altar, you will be given the elements and directed to partake them uh, at the appropriate time. I'll have a word of prayer. Then you'll rise and move back to your seats up the center aisle, and you'll see some people will come, and, and they will lay uh, communion offerings uh, on, the, uh, on the altar rail, or you can drop your communion offering in one of the white baskets that you see as you exit the church this morning, exit the sanctuary this morning, I should say. So I uh, do hope that you will join us for that. Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about the idea of change because we know that change in one way or another is always a around us, but uh, we're anticipating large change uh, within our church, and certainly there's been large change within the denomination. Last week we were talking about, as we read out of Joshua chapter 1, that in the midst of change it's very important that, that we not build on what we think about ourselves. It's not uh, important that, that we uh, think uh, or build on what we think about others. It's very important, though, that we depend and we build upon what we know about God. Because there's a stability to God that you cannot deny. There's a stability to God that stays with us time and time again. And, and we're going to continue on today and, and read again in Joshua chapter 1. We're going to be reading verses 6 through 9. If you want to uh, read along in your Bibles there, the, 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 they're going to pop up on the screen, Mike. we got Scripture. Right, it's going to pop up on the screen. You can read along with us there. But before we get there, I, I just want to tell you that, that in this season, um, things have fallen through the cracks. Because over the past uh, couple of months, over the past few weeks, really, uh, there are a lot of us within the church that, that have been consumed with getting things right. Because as we prepare to move away from the denomination, if that's their vote today, uh, things had to be done in a correct order. Your I's had to be dotted and your T's had to be crossed in a particular manner or there was going to be problems. So from the pulpit and from the pastor, let, let me just say to you, uh, those things that have fallen through the cracks, I, I apologize for that. Uh, a lot of us have been consumed with a lot of different things that, um, that frankly um, are troubling uh, because they have pulled us away from what we are called to do, not only as individuals, but as a church. Those days are quickly coming to an end. We are going to be back to what we have been called to do as a church. And we will do that as a United Methodist Church or we will do that as an independent church. That decision is, is up to God. And uh, one of the prayers that I've been consistently praying over the past few weeks is this. God, your will in this situation, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. So as we prepare to go there today, just uh, hear from my heart uh, just a, a profound sorrow because um, I, I'll just tell you my heart and my mind have been divided over the past few weeks and I appreciate your prayers and as we move through this time together just know that, that every day, every hour and every minute that takes by we're one step closer one step closer to being able to be back on center uh, as to why we're here, and that is to, to win people to the truth of, of who Jesus is. So thank you for your prayers, and as we move into this thought today, it's no, <laughs> it's no coincidence that we are reading about a people who were in uh, at least a similar situation to what we are. 
we're not running from slavery into what God had promised us. We are trying to do better with what God has given us, but we are in the midst of, of going through change as the Israelites were in the midst of going through change. One of the things that we established last week was that there were some similarities between us and them that uh, bear looking at. One of the very first things we noticed as we read last week was this. Uh, the people had to realize that Joshua not only was not Moses, but Joshua was no Moses. Totally and completely different leadership styles there. And they were being asked to follow Joshua, not Moses, into this promised land where uh, it, Joshua's men would come to learn, that spies would come to learn, that, that people were huge and God was asking them to go in and take this land and it was a great change for them. So today, as we continue on reading, it's very important for us to remember that even in the midst of change, things changing around us, even in the midst of divided minds and divided hearts, God is still God, and that's the most important thing to remember. Read along with me today in Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. This is God speaking to Joshua as Joshua is confronted with the truth that uh, Moses is dead and that he now is the man, so to speak, in the nation of Israel. God in chapter 1, verse 6 says this, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and be courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Here's the essential truth that I find in this word following things that are consistent, following things that are consistent is much easier than following things whose only consistency is change. Following something that is consistent is a lot easier than following something whose only consistency is change. When our churches begin to change because the world is changing, things are out of order. You need to understand that. I wish I had something different to tell you. I wish God would impress something on my heart that is different. But he doesn't, and he won't, I believe, because I think that is essential truth. Has the church changed over the years? Yeah, for the good and for the bad. Where humans are involved, things are going to get muddy. What do I tell you with great consistency? I tell you with great consistency that the church is a beautiful place. Then people show up, and it all goes to heck in a handbasket, right? Where the people are involved, there are going to be issues. Things change, people change, but the Word of God never changes. That's why God can say to Joshua, your success leading these people is not dependent upon your ability. Your success in leading these people into this change, into this place where I have promised them, your success there is tied to your relationship with my word. That's why he can say to Joshua, obey it. That's why he can say to Joshua, Never let it depart from your mouth, okay? Let it always be on your lips. That's why he can say to Joshua, with your word, always, always, always. I'm sorry, with my word, always, follow it. These are the things that make a difference. For me and for you, it's very essential that we understand that. And we practice it still today. I mean, just, just.
think for a moment. We're about to prepare to come to the Lord's table. And what we're doing today is very representative of things from the Old Testament. You may not realize this. It may not have occurred to you that, that what we're doing is very similar to celebrating the Passover meal. You see, there was a time after Jesus came to this earth and he had completed his ministry, he knew that it was time for the cross. And he knew that that was going to happen at the celebration of the Passover in Jerusalem. So he gathered his disciples and, and they made a trek to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover as, as hundreds of thousands of other people were doing. And he called them together and he asked them to follow him there. And, and some of the Gospels tell a very short version of that trip and, and then others tell a very long version of that trip, if you will. And as they get to the outskirts of Jerusalem, he says to his disciples, in one gospel, go find a colt for me to ride in on. And that version continues. And, and Jesus says, look, we also need to, to find a place to, to celebrate the Passover. <coughs> Excuse me. He goes on, and he begins to tell the, the disciples that are with him, as you go and you find this place, this is where we will celebrate together. And, and what they're celebrating is the Passover. And the Passover is inextricably linked to the Old Testament. Not a lot of people realize that. They think, oh, Passover is a very high Jewish holiday. It is linked to the beginning of the story that we're sharing here. The beginning of the story that we're sharing here started with 400 years of captivity. proverbial frog in the throat <clears throat> apparently has claws this Sunday because he's hanging on tight <clears throat> sorry those 400 years of captivity were, were coming to an end and, and God had heard his people speak and you know you've, you've read the story you've seen the movie you understand very very keenly that Pharaoh did not want to turn the Israelites loose and, and God was called, our God, Moses was called by God to, to convince Pharaoh to leave and nine different times Pharaoh gave in and said go and then no don't go and God said you know this last time I'm going to do something that um, that will break him I'm going to send the death angel through uh, Egypt. And I'm going to take the life of every firstborn. You need to go and you need to tell the Israelites to slaughter a lamb, a perfect lamb, and take that blood and smear it on the doorpost. When the death angel moves through the land of Egypt, he will see that blood on the doorpost and he will pass over your house and God goes on and institutes what we know as the celebration of the Passover so there is that inextricable connection to the Old Testament there is that thing that helps us to know understand and realize that we are to hold on to Old Testament and New Testament that we are to hold on to that word because the word is never changing the word is always clear. The word is always faithful. The word is always with us. That's why in the midst of things that are changing around us, God can confidently say to us, hold on to my word, obey it, follow it. 
Let it rest in your mind and let it always be on your lips. Because this is the truth and the essence of who I am. And so as we come to the communion table today, that's what we're celebrating. We're celebrating what happened on that night so many years ago when Jesus gathered his disciples together. And they participated in the Passover meal. And at the end of that Passover meal, Jesus did something that's very, very unusual. He, he took bread, he, he broke bread, and asked the Lord to bless it. Gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given uh, for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. We're about to go through that story here in our communion liturgy. And it was so foreign. It was so out of the ordinary that what Jesus did became very important to us. And it's all tied to the truth of God's word. And as we come to this communion table today, in this world of change, let us find comfort in this thing that does not change, the presence of the word of God. Pray with me. Be with us today, Father, as we come together, create within our hearts and in our minds an everlasting peace that is connected to your word. Now guide us and strengthen us. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will take your insert that looks like this, the our communion liturgy as we move through this, there may be a couple of things that I want to point out to you. It's pretty self-explanatory. I read those things that are in regular typeface, and we respond in unison those things that are in bold. Let's begin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. And right out of the gate, let me stop right there and explain something to you. There is within this first sentence in this liturgy a litmus test. You want to know if you are uh, fit or willing or able to come to this table? There it is. God invites to his table all who love him. First question you ask yourself is this, do I love God? He goes on and says, who earnestly repent of their sin. The second question you ask yourself, am I truly penitent of my sin? Do I really repent of the sin that I committed? And who seek to live in peace with one another. And that's the third and final part of that litmus test. Do I truly want to live at peace? Not just with people who believe like I do, but po people who believe however they want to believe. Is peace my ultimate goal? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. There it is. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, and the church joins together and says, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us pray silently. We draw our prayerful hearts to a close, and I say, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, he gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with each other, one in Christ, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And the church says, Amen. If those who are assisting with communion would come forward. Gene, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Gene, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as we serve today, let us do so with those who are sold out to you. And as we do this, Father, let us remember the great sacrifice that has been given on our behalf that we may emulate that in this world. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. And friends, as you feel led, you may line up along the outside wall and fill the altar as you come down. Fill from first to last. First to last. <laughs>
Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. Let us pray. In rising, Father, let us find new purpose and let that purpose be centered upon you. The one thing that never changes. Let us be grateful for that and let us serve accordingly. In Christ's name, amen. You may fill the altar again. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. Heavenly Father, in the taking of these elements that represent the broken body and blood of Christ, let us be renewed and revived. And as we uh, move forward in this world of change, let us... Uh, let us pin ourselves to the thing that never changes. And that's the eternal power and presence of your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. You may fill the altar again.
Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we rise, equip us to serve and let us do so for the glory of your name. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to close out in song today. Please stand together. The altar is open. If you need to come forward and pray, please feel free to do so. I'll be happy to meet you here and pray with you uh, or just leave you alone and let you spend a little time with God if you didn't get a chance to, to pray here today. If you wish to unite with the church as a member, now is the time to come forward and make your wishes known. Thank you so much for being here.
Thank you so much for being with us today. I'd like to take just a couple of moments and introduce you to Rebecca Smith. Rebecca has come forward this morning to rededicate her life to Christ, and we're very grateful to be able to be uh, participate in that with her. Please be sure that you greet her today. Rebecca is here. Uh, I understand you remember in the past. Is that correct? Good, good. And she is here today, again, to rededicate her life, and we're so very, very, uh, as my mama used to say, tickled to get to participate in this with her. Thank you, Rebecca. God bless you all. Receive this blessing as you, or this uh, benediction as you depart. Move into the world to be the hands and the feet of Jesus that in all things Jesus may be known, may, uh, may be made known through you and through the clinging. <clears throat> through your clinging to his word above all else. Take this into the world today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, dear. We're going to sing one last song that is one of Aaron's favorites and one of my favorites. May the circle be unbroken. <laughs> 